This he just conference wants to, will now be recorded. He just wants the right bride to share it with. You know, before, and I thank God for it, you know, you was just looking for the physical, and God has never just looked for the physical. He wanted the right bride. So as he goes to prepare a place for us that we may go, he's looking for the right bride to share this with. A bride that's going to be in relationship. And when I say relationship, wants to hear, you know, um, just your thoughts and how you think. Thank you, Lord. How you think, uh, how, how this works, how that works. <clears throat> and enjoying just him, you know, his goodness. And it's beautiful. So as God has blessed me, and I was listening to this lady yesterday of her testimony of how, um, I guess, pornography started when she was six. And I can relate to that because, you know, you grow up playing house and you don't know what's being introduced to you. And that's Satan's way of doing little things. So how her life was already starting to spiral out and because there was no foundation she never knew who christ was but then when her her mom got saved you know her friends were always saying when are you gonna go to church with me when are you gonna go to church with me um so um i forgot what happened but she got to a place where she went out with some friends not really having value in her life uh went out and you know got drunk but then don't know how she got to where she was, but was driving on the wrong side of the street and she was seeing this bright light and she just got out of the car and just started crying. And she said for the first time she experienced that it was God. It was God who saved her. She could have been in jail. She could have had an accident, going on the wrong, dead, everything else. And she knew that God had kept her. And um, that's where she says to her friend, her mom's friend, I want to go to church now. So she started having a relationship with God, um, being on fire for God. And then during that time, she met a guy who, OK, God, this is my purpose for me to love my my husband wholeheartedly, to be obedient to him. Thank you. Lord. Here's what's great. Not crazy. I'm listening to her and it's like the world. I said, I guess I want to misinterpret the scriptures. He tells the, the wife to be submissive unto the husband. And the husband loves your wife as Christ loved the church. <laughs> it's the reason why. And I say that to say, as God has blessed me with everything, God has not just blessed me, but he gave me his spirit even to the point where, God, this, this life that you've given me, I want you to be the head of my life. I want you. Why? Because I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to mess this up. I want your direction. Lord, but forgive me for sometimes lagging in the communication. But I want you to be head of my life. Why? Because, Lord, you not just you bless me, but it's 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 beyond beautiful it's beyond everything that i've even imagined you know and it's like god's gift also blesses you with submission a desire to want to be obedient that's his holy spirit and thank you lord as he's birthing this in us his way he will get the glory. He will get the honor. It will be in alignment with what his word. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself. And when you think about it, I know God has showed me that. How did he give himself? He humbled himself and gave, and became obedient to the plan for salvation for the bride. That's what he did. So he was obedient unto the father. <coughs> to be obedient for his bride, but it was unto the father. So it's like God is putting me in a, in a, thank you, Lord. He's writing my story. He's writing my story. He's putting me in position and I believe God has showed me. He says, 
when a father, when a husband, when a, a son leaves his mother and father and be joined together with his wife, the two shall become as one. I didn't realize that I needed to move away from my family. Why? Because God is establishing me as he being head of my family. You know, I don't want to think that, okay, if something happens, that's too much of the physical point of life. God, please, I thank you for being here. Cover me. You know, I, I'm concerned about certain things coming in my household, so I got to watch what I on TV. I got to I got to keep this. I was telling God last night, Lord, I want my household to be like your sanctuary. I want, and that's what he showed a house of prayer. I want my house to be a house of prayer. So it's like, OK, God, you're showing me even with a desire of a car. I didn't realize what it was that I want. And this whole time that I've been in a rental, um, I switched up to a different rental. I like the space. I like having space. Um, I like luxury. I like nice things. I like a sunroof. I like, you know, I, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy my daughter enjoying this. I enjoy that. Um, so as God is doing all of these things, I'm realizing through what he's allowed me to experience what it is that I like. So as God is even blessing me, I'm now realizing, God, yes, I like a nice place. I want the lights to turn on when I flick them. I don't want a house with light switch that they don't operate. Nothing comes on. That's backwards. So I got to trust God in what he's doing because the uh, landlord doesn't come and fix anything. I got to trust God is what he's doing. Uh, yesterday when he was like, Greg, you just... You, you've been patient with me. It's been since January since I came here. You ain't did anything. I got to let that go and get it out. So as I told him, I got to be also careful that, hey, I fix the light to you. I don't need y'all coming back trying to say I did anything. So then when I'm listening to how he's telling me it needs to be done, quietly, it's like after I walked away, the Holy Spirit is showing me if it was done, if he knew all of that, it would have been done properly when you moved in. And the fact that it wasn't done properly shows that he don't even know what he's talking. He's just talking. Mm -hmm. But it's not for me to say anything. Right. It's not for me to say anything. It's fixed. So, you know, even when the toilet was leaking. I had to take apart the toilet, put a ring around it, and seal it back up. So I, I'm seeing certain things that, that do I want to do that? I thought I didn't want to, but that's the things that you have to do. Thank you, Lord. He's telling me yeah. right now, you're keeping and tending the garden. That's right. you're, you're tending the garden. It's just not the physical part. It's also your spiritual part. You have to keep and tend the garden. <laughs> You know, and yep. I heard and, that's and what you're it was. suited for. Yeah, this is where your heart is. Your heart is construction. Your heart is to fix things. And now you're fixing things in your own garden instead of somebody else's. Do you see how the Lord's planted you there? And and how do you feel? Right? Like you feel amazing. You feel empowered. You feel like you're taking care of what God has blessed you with. I mean, dude, you're full of the spirit. I and mean, you're full of life today, brother. Sitting there in your own place, you know, doing your own thing, fixing your own stuff. Praise God, man. And you're and you're you know how to do that stuff better than most people. So God's like, yeah, I put you here so you can work on a few things. Well, Ryan, all guy, of that you're the guy who knows how to do it, right? Well, I, and, and that sounds good from that point of perspective, but from the inside, I just need my relationship to stay solid and healthy in Christ. That's it. Uh, you understand you, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So, so, as you are doing all of those 
tedious things around the house, that is your time to spend with your Heavenly Father. I'm, I'm speaking from firsthand experience because when I was doing construction projects in the backyard or gardening, and I didn't really know what the next step was, I just kind of set my mind upon the Heavenly Father as if like my dad was right there watching over me, telling me what the next step to do is. You know what I mean? And so yeah. it's, it's, it's a great opportunity to be with the Lord, you know, as you're doing those chores that have to be done to keep your garden growing and going forward. So, yeah, bro, I'm with you. Just, just paradigm shift that. So as you're, as you're, as you're taking that ring off the toilet and doing that type of work, you're, you're in the Holy Spirit talking to the Father. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, man. I yeah. Let me let me share something with that, Greg and, and Ryan. Because I, I've experienced that, and one thing that He's doing for you, you're laboring in another man's ministry, and you're honorable to another man's ministry. You're faithful to another man's ministry, preparing you for yours. All you're doing is he's preparing you for your next blessing, your next home, that when your daughter come, he's preparing you for your bride. He's preparing you for eyes have not seen or ears heard type of blessing. But you're laboring in another man's ministry. That's why I, that's why I understand the faithfulness in working in another man's ministry. And pouring all that you have to accommodate and assist someone else. Because that's where the joy of the Lord come in when we're able to help others. And you do it using your gifts and talents. And he's cultivating your gifts and talents for your ministry that you'll be able to just like start in the church. I clean the restroom. I sweep the floor. I, I vacuum. I prepare the sanctuary. So when people come. I, I work in every vocation within the ministry. And that's what he's doing with you. You're working in all these different vocations, preparing you for your home, preparing you for the next thing. And you're, and you're doing it in another man's, I'm going to say another man's ministry. That's a blessing in his own right. That's an honor. That's an honor. And God sees that. And then you're spending time with him. Because he's the one that you're, like Ryan said, you're ministering with, you're sharing with, you're talking with, you're fellowshipping with, and he is showing you things, you're seeing things, you're asking him questions, he's giving you answers to certain things, you complain about certain things, and he tell you why it's like that. Then you get an understanding, you say, okay, Lord, I see better now. It's all for your benefit. It's all for your benefit, and your light is continuing to shine. Because you're doing it, in the, like Ryan said, in the love of God. You're doing it out of love because you want to get closer to him. And to get closer to him is where he has you at right now. You're still laboring in another man's ministry, and you're getting closer to him. Because what did Jesus do? He said, they can't wash my feet. I'm going to wash your feet. I'm going to labor for you. I'm going to do this for you. So you're an imitator of Jesus. You're the light of the world. You're letting your light shine. And as you continue to do these things, God continues to utilize your gifts and your talents to show the world. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. My servant, Greg Watson, look what he's doing. He's up here changing a wax ring in, a, in, in, in the landlord's house. Cause, and the landlord is saying, thank you, I'm sorry. Thank you for being patient with me. <laughs> Thank you for being patient with me. You're just showing the love of God. He's comfortable with you. And it gives you a chance to minister to him, to make him a better landlord. But in spite of it all, I'm still going to labor. I'm still going to do what's right. I'm going to treat this home like it's my home. I'm going to treat this home like I bought it. And continue to go. And then when he moves you, that gentleman going to say, what manner of man is that? I hope, I pray, I get another tenant like Greg Watson. That's what you bring in heavenly qualities here on earth. You're showing God's heavenly qualities right here on earth. 
And that's what we got to do as believers to the unbelief, the people who don't understand. He's looking at it for money, and this guy is taking care of my property. But God is using it for a whole different thing. You want to be there just to have fellowship and have a nice place for your daughter to come. And so you're doing all these things to make sure that it's appropriate for your loved ones. And then you're still having fellowship with God. What a beautiful situation. You're putting your hands to the plow. You're, you're tending to the garden. And you're making it beautiful. So, man, I, that's when I'm, I'm hearing that and I'm just getting blessed by just that, that fact alone, you know, because a lot of people won't do that. They'll be complaining to the landlord and this and that. <laughs> Next thing you know, you guys at odds with each other and he mad, you mad. He look at you and say, oh, gosh, this dude is so faithful. Man, this guy, I couldn't ask for a bit. You, you were answering a prayer for him. He probably prayed you. <laughs> You're answering his prayer where he's weak, you strong. And he said, man, I oh, you sent me a tenant. He's probably playing any wake up. I thank God for this Greg Watson. I don't know how many properties he got, but he probably said, I thank God for this tenant. Lord, I, don't have, I don't know who I put people in here. I never had one like him. I never had a man to come in here and show me this. But you brought Christ in his environment. And now you're, and you're saturating the walls. With, with praise and worship. You're saturating the walls with, 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 with fellowship with the Lord and the anointing is falling all over that place. The next tenant walk in there with whatever addiction they have, they're going to be convicted, provoked to repent because you're saturating the walls with God's word. <laughs> oh, Lord, you too much, Lord. You too much, Lord. You sure know how to make things happen. You, you know what's so beautiful, G? You, uh, I'll share this testimony. Is that uh, two things. The guy, when he wanted to tell me, well, let me know your price, your time, and everything else, and, and I'll give you some money, you know. And he was like, well, how much was the tools and everything else? So when I started going through this, he wanted to hop, pull out some money, like a wad of money. And it's like, come on, dude, stop it. Yeah, and it's like and he was like, "Well, here's sixty dollars, man. I don't need your money. I don't need, you know." And, and it was more of a, I don't want to call it an insult. I don't want to. I don't know how to take it. Basically, you're flashing your money as if I'm supposed to just jump. That don't move me. And I needed to let him know that that don't move me, dude. That means nothing to me. You know, and if I'm going to do this, then give me some time to put a bill together because you don't know my prices. You don't know yeah, what. Yeah, I, and I'm yeah. still thank you, Lord, for humbling me. I'm finding out my worth. You know, I'm finding out my worth. And I remember one day I was praying. I got on my knees and I thank you, Lord. I was praying. I started in the spirit. I started praying for this atmosphere. Praying, oh, thank you. I was praying over even my neighbors I don't know. And then when I left and I got on the highway, it was maybe about an hour later, my sister called a couple of times. She was like, where are you at? I, I'm on the way to Long Beach. There was just a shooting right behind your house. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Somebody got stabbed at, I guess it started at uh, Taco Bell. It started at Taco Bell and then they ran into uh, Walmart. Uh, an active shooter ran into Walmart. So as I'm seeing, it's like, okay, God, wow. I didn't even know. But what's been on my heart was that we used to do this at Soldiers for Christ. We walked when we were praying for the school. We started walking around the blocks and I got to take the time to do that, to walk around the block and to be able to bless the neighborhood, anoint the streets, bless the neighborhood. Um, ask God to plant his angels in this neighborhood that even though that that. They don't know me, but there will be a change. Why? Because they know that something's different in this neighborhood. So I, I'm, I'm just seeing, I'm seeing quietly what God is doing and what he's teaching me. 
is teaching me to be humble and strategic. Thank you, Lord. He's showing me how Jesus moved. Hey, he was God in the flesh. I, I'm sorry, huh? Greg. I have to say this. I have Go to ahead. say this. You know, they talk about colonizers. And I hear a lot of guys talk about colonizing and colonizing. What is but that? See, that's what, when, when it's colonized when people come and begin to restructure the environment that they're around. They begin to implement their views. And see, that's what God desired for the believer. I heard a minister a minister that from, uh, for, from uh, he is from uh, 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 Jamaica. Not Jamaica, not Jamaica. What's the, Bahamas. And Bahamas was under a king and queen, Queen Elizabeth. And Queen Elizabeth, when they took over Jamaica, I mean the, the Bahamas, they brought their views. They brought brought their their values. They brought their thought and they colonized the Bahamas to think be just like Britain, Great Britain. And see, that's what God desired for us to do in communities that we are around. We're to colonize our communities just like heaven. Our responsibility as believers to bring heaven here on earth, to colonize this earth to be just like heaven and so what do he send he sends a ambassador and when he sends his representative the ambassador the ambassador go to the environment he surveyed the scene he examined the scene and then he began to implement his the the the, the colony that needs like like great britain those values in that environment what you're doing you're in you're bringing the the environment of heaven in your community you're colonizing it you're bringing god's purpose and god's will from heaven here on earth in that environment and see so that's why you you feel provoked to walk the streets or walk the community because you're colonizing that's why you have to bless your home and pray over your home you're colonizing see you're changing it because when we're under a king, we follow the things that a king would do. We don't live under a democratic system. We, 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 we're, we're under the governing authority of a kingdom. And it's a king, and there's one king who governs over a kingdom that has citizens. And that's who we are. And we're fulfilling and providing the service from our kingdom, heavenly kingdom, and we're applying these views here on earth. And that's what you're doing. You're colonizing. You're transforming this thing from earth. Because he said, heavens is the Lord and the earth is for his children. So we have to bring heaven. That's why the scriptures say, our father, which art in heaven, who's in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven so as an ambassador and a representative of the kingdom of god and he has placed you in your environment unbeknownst to you a cold different from where you came from and placed you here to bring heavenly qualities in that environment and you're transforming, you're colonizing. You're bringing heavenly qualities on earth in that environment. That's the responsibility of the believer. Earth should mimic. That's why he said, that's why God said in, in Genesis, he said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls in the air, and every living thing. He didn't say, remember he said in, in Genesis, he said, let us make man in our image. So he made us in his image. But when it came to earth, he said, let them. He excluded himself. He said, let them have dominion. We're responsible for this earth. We're responsible to bring heavenly qualities here on earth. We know what happened. Adam fell. The first man, Pharaoh, the first Adam fell. Jesus redeemed us back. But it's going to come. But now this time, Jesus redeemed us back. 
But the thing that I've been studying, but it comes with many afflictions. And I was doing a study and I said, it's a scripture that says that we're the righteousness of God through Christ. So if, if we proclaim to be the righteousness of God through Christ, that's what he said. He said we're the righteousness of God through Christ. So being the righteousness of God through Christ, and then he says in his word, check this out. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God deliver you out of all. So if you proclaim to be the righteousness of God through Christ, Guess what's going to come with being the righteousness of God through Christ? Many afflictions. He didn't say some afflictions. He didn't say light afflictions. He didn't say a few afflictions. He said many are the afflictions of the righteous. And that's why that study, uh, 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 Dustin is teaching in Daniel. And he talked about uh, uh, Jeremiah who had to lay on his left side and then lay on his right side for 300 and some days. Given an object lesson. Afflictions. Many. So we're going to have many afflictions. But the key is God delivered us out of all. See, that's the key. He keeps delivering us out. You share your testimony, where he brought you from. How many times I've been with Saul for a few years, and I've heard you go through many afflictions. But the righteousness of God, we're the righteousness of God in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. The righteousness of God in Christ. We are. And then, and so if we're the righteousness of God in Christ, and then he say many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers you out of all. So what are the afflictions? Trials and tribulations. Assaults and attacks. Things that's going to come against us. And he said, I deliver you out of all. And then he says this. Count it all joy, and James, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. He said, count it all joy. <laughs> That's why I laugh. He said, now count this all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Knowing your faith's work is patience. <laughs> Wait a minute, count it all joy with all these afflictions when I fall into divers temptation. Because, and then he says, for the joy of your Lord, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Man, this, see, so I've learned in the midst of my afflictions, in the midst of my trials and tribulations. I mean, look at the matriarchs and the patriarchs that came before us. Look at all the afflictions they had to deal with. Look at Daniel. Look at David. Look at Je Jeremiah. Look at Ezekiel. Look at Jonah. Look at Moses. Look at Paul. Look at Peter. Look at all of the afflictions. But God delivered them out of all. And then, Greg, it goes back to the message that you taught, that you shared. And when they crossed over, and I'm still got to study, I'm still doing my study on it. Oh, death, where is your sting? See, people expect, expect the sting of death, but Jesus conquered death. Jesus overcame the last one is death. People are afraid of death. But the scriptures say, oh, death, where is your sting? They expect something from the only people that's going to experience the sting of death is those who don't accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. You're going to expect us to sting of death. But those are the righteousness of God in Christ who are enduring hardship. And that, that's another script you say, endure hardship as a good soldier. Because <laughs> that's my strength. That's my pill. That's my pill when I laugh because it's joy. You say, and now you endure hardship as a good soldier. And then he says this. How do we identify with Christ? We identify him through his suffering. <laughs> oh, man. That's why, so that's why you don't have a fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear. What are you going to do to me? I'm already dead. Like That's what George always say. 
What you gonna do to him? I'm already dead. I did, that's why he said you've been bought with a price, you're not, not your own. That's why you have to understand that scripture. When you've been bought with a price, you're not your own, then you can endure these hardships as a good soldier. Because you know it's not by you. You're just doing what God has ordained for you. And he used this exterior body for his purpose and his use. That's why Ezekiel and Jeremiah had to lay on his side. Just, just, he, I can't wait till next Monday. To hear the rest of the message. Jeremiah had to lay on his side. 360 days, left and right side. Because he's been bought with a price, he's not his own. So we surrender unto our Lord and we are surrendered to our Savior. It's not by our power nor our might anyway. All we do is plant in water. God gives, he gives the increase. So you colonize in your community, that community you're in right now. <laughs> you are colonizing that community. He's going to send you some more colonizers to work with you. And you continue to bless that landlord. He might be one of your oh. next guy who's working with you, Greg. <laughs> he might be one of your, you, you, you. One of your <laughs> You know what, G, I appreciate what you're saying, and, and I know it's God because even the fact of the things that God allowed you to share as it is in heaven. And even right before you were speaking, the Holy Spirit was leading me to the point where look at Jesus. When Jesus came, he was not just the son of God, but he was God in the flesh as the son of God. Um he wasn't parading himself. He wasn't, I'm God. He just quietly stayed humble, did what he was told, saw certain things, addressed it respectfully, fixed it, didn't force anybody to anything, shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, this is what he did. So as we're ambassadors, and I, I got a chance to, um, as thank you, Lord, as he's allowing me to put things in order, I started looking for my certificate. You know, I just completed and God assured me I was building you spiritually first before the physical. Why? Because if you look at, go back to Genesis, look at the order. He said, learn dominion. Hebrews was saying, the likeness of of Jesus, the likeness of Jesus. In Jesus, we will see the likeness of God in Jesus. So you will see the fullness of God. You will see, you will be able to see God physically in Jesus. Why? And you see his likeness, his characteristics, everything about him. The physical part is the phys, is the image. But you, his likeness is the characteristics that God holds. Thank you, Lord. That's what he's building us. He says, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. He shared the beginning from the end. Um, and he said, have dominion. Learn the right order of things. So when we are, the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us, we don't want to be seen. It's not, and, and I'm, Brother G, I'm, I'm really starting to see even though that God has blessed me, son, I'm teaching you how to be quiet. I remember when God asked God for more money. He allowed that relationship to, to blossom. What it was, it was that I was using money as therapy, as healing. I didn't know that every time I shopped, I felt good and it was built, I felt like it was building me up. But God said, I want to be your Lord and Savior over everything. So during that procedure, it was only God that provided every need that I needed to go through the situation to find out I'm misusing money. Now that God has blessed me with so much, God, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> and it's like, I'm watching what God is doing. It's like, this is my thank you, Lord. This is my son. Why? Because even though I blessed him, he's still coming to me and asking me, what is the direction? I don't want nobody to know what it is that I have. I don't mind wearing the same things every day. I don't mind that. 
I don't mind not getting a haircut for the next two weeks. I don't mind that. Why? Because I'm not I'm not doing it to show this is me. I I, I got other things that I'm focusing on. God, I'm, I'm I'm concerned about my relationship with you. I'm concerned. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I was telling them I just was asking God, God, I want my household to be like your household, a house of prayer. That's what I want my household to be like. So as God is building me, he's showing me what your house should be like. In this house, we will serve the Lord. In this house, in the Watson's house, we're going to serve the Lord. And as a woman was sharing, she was jealous of the relationship that the father was having with the daughter. Why? Because the daughter never that she saw the mother saw that the daughter was having everything that she never had. And what I heard is. As a father, I'm supposed to be building my children up. Do I do a good job? No, I don't. Sometimes I try to shy away from it. Why? Because it's a responsibility. I don't want to thank you, Lord. It's the consistency of the responsibility. I don't want to take the word responsibility and make it a monster. It's not a monster. It's a valuable tool. Instruction last night when we were reading uh, with this young man, his name is Anthony. Uh, we was reading about wisdom. Wisdom is the skill and instruction is the discipline. So the discipline that God is building, I need to continue to be disciplined. So as God is, I thought, I thank God for what he's doing in the scriptures. I was hearing something new as the Holy Spirit is introducing and showing me. I think it was in uh, Hebrew. I'm not sure if it was in Hebrew, but what I was reading that is who Jesus is, his name was given from the father and it's like i was even um thinking on this like okay if his name is above all names i'm thinking of and 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 god had gave authority to jesus even over the angels even though that jesus was made a little bit lesser than the angels but i'm listening to what god had called jesus and I started thinking, and as the Holy Spirit was putting on my heart, God named every every angel that he has. Raphael, uh, the healer, right? Um, what's what's another one? Uh, uh Michael, the, the 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 art what is it, Michael, the, the warrior? So as I'm hearing the names that God has called each one of them, when he gave Jesus the name, it was the Messiah the savior. So it's like the names that God even gives us is going to, that's the seed that he's called for it to blossom into. That is your purpose of the name that God has gave each and every one of us. So as I'm seeing these things, that's where as God is placing it in my heart, thank you, Lord, the house that God gives me is gonna be a house of prayer. So the wife that I'm gonna have She's going to have to be a prayer warrior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She said, oh, yes, Lord Jesus. She's going to have to be a prayer warrior. Why? Because this is the house that God has established. And it's no disrespect. But if you like this household, this is what we're going to do. But what has to the husband has to be. Love mean um, give himself um, the same way that God has given find being obedient to the order of things that God has set set in order. I have to continue praying, staying in prayer, bless this house in prayer, anoint this house in prayer. Everything has to go out. Why? And I stay consistent, continuous. I've just been able to go and buy me a calendar so I can get back to a position of needing seeing my calendar. Why? Because God is bringing back to memory everything that he gave me. I'm watching my supervisor, my my boss. He has a, 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 a whiteboard, um, took the tape to be able to make the boxes of each day that he's writing. So it's teaching me how to use the proper tools properly of what's the plan for the day. This is the plan for the day. And as God is showing me these things, it's like, this is becoming awesome. It is becoming awesome. Why? Because God is building his kingdom in each and every one of us. Going back to what you're saying, we are an ambassadors. What is the ambassador? The seed of God has been planted so it can start prowling and being able to be fruits for the, the healing of the nation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's the leaves that is healing of the nation. When we Thank you. What did he say to the man when he healed his eyes? 
What do you see? I see men that look like trees. Why did he say that first? We're the seeds of Christ and we're blossoming. So we can bless one another and other people. So I, I thank you for making it clear, G. I thank you for, for, for I don't want to call you the elder, but the wisdom of God that he has blessed you. Why? Because you walked it out. You said, I'm the ministry song for someone else. You're being a good steward of it. So when God blesses you, you have now the tools of everything else. I was just sharing that with the other young guy. God is building you. You want to be a fighter. You like fighting. So God is giving you a spiritual fight. You have to fight. You have to fight. It's like if you tell that person, man, I don't want to fight you because you're going to beat me up. You just turned around and gave him all the power he has. Why? Because I can do whatever I want to you now. But if you tell him, man, man, look, hey, you might you might feel a certain way on your inside, but you don't tell him that. Like, all right, man, whatever. But in the back of your mind, you know it's going to be a fight. I'm going to hit you with everything that I can. I'm not going to just lay down. You ain't going to just take the best of me. You hit me, I'm going to get back up. And if I get back up, I'm going to hurt you. This is, this is, and how do we do that? Through our obedience to God. I don't want to fight nobody. I don't even want to argue with nobody. But as God is exposing some things, it's like, all right, let me just walk away. All right, bye. <laughs> but God is teaching humility. He's teaching me to allow him to deal with it. It's like I used to ask God, God, why do you show me all these things? Because I'm just having pillow talk with you. That's all it is. I don't need you to go fight my battles. I don't need you to fix anything. I'm just having a conversation with you, telling you, you see this? You, you see this character right here? You see how they acting? That, don't worry about nothing. You hear how he talking to you? Don't worry about nothing. He says, don't even talk about it. But bless them by praying for. That's my obedience. God is teaching me and moving me to a place where we don't talk about a situation because that's gossip me. But if you bring it up and you tell me about it, then I need to cut it short and let's pray about it. Why? Because that's the order of things that God has placed. Going back to that dominion. This is the right order of things. That's it, G. <laughs> Well, that's just a blessing. I mean, you know, as we look at the things of God, you know, we just got to stay focused. I think Ryan want to read Matthew chapter 13. So let's I see think, what he got on the word. Yeah, the Lord is, the Lord is uh, speaking to me that you guys are giving us a real-world example of Matthew 13 through Greg's testimony and through the words of what you're sharing with him. So he put the word field. He kept putting the word field in my mind. I'm listening to Greg. I'm like, field, field, what? fields of fire, fields of what? I'm like, field, field. And he directed me through several steps to Matthew 13. And I read Matthew 13 real quick. And every time Greg would say something, it lined up exactly with what I was reading in Matthew 13, several different times. I think we should all read this together. Um, I'll just start it. Um, so if you guys could, uh, pull out your Bibles if you can. And let's, um, if you're able, let's do it together. Um, I think Joe's going to have something to say about this because there's some nuggets in here that, <laughs> and things that you guys said, I'll, I'll tell you, Joe prophesied about two years ago. He said something that you said, Greg Hamilton, about Greg Watson two years ago that you just confirmed today that I think the Lord is what what Greg what Joe said two years ago wasn't just a blessing, it was a prophecy. It seems to be coming true. So it's all it, it's and it's all um illustrated in Matthew 13 about where the Lord is planting people in the field. And that's where the prophecies are going to be fulfilled. The, the prayers are going to be answered. Why? Because he's planting 
his sons as seeds in the field. Oh. And, Greg, wow. and, and Greg said something, he goes, I'm just finding out what my worth is. Oh. Do you know how huge that is? From a brother who, to come from where he was to now saying, oh my goodness, I have value? Yeah. That's what I that's what I used to tell people in uh, in my first stint at rehab. Sometimes the Holy Spirit would come upon me and I would tell other people who were contemplating suicide that you have value that you don't even know about. Huh. I said you have value. You've just been listening to the enemy and your whole life and you're beating yourself up. You have value. And when Greg said that, he says, I'm finding out what my worth is. Well, that's that's the 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 guy who buys the field and finds a pearl within that field. And he goes and purchases the whole field for that one pearl. Wow. And then God takes that pearl. And what does he do? He wow. takes that pearl, turns it into a seed, and plants it into the world. Wow. Watch this. Let's read Matthew 13. If you guys can, pull it out. And uh, I haven't heard from Joe in a while. I'm just listening, and the Lord's speaking to me. So, uh, Joe, are you still awake? There, there you go, waking me up again. Hey, Joe. Right. Had a, Joe, did you, did you drink a latte? You, you yeah, to the latte? I, yeah, I just, I just had a, um, a uh, uh, turmeric. Coco latte, yeah, yep, that's right. <laughs> See, Greg's on top of it. He knows. Well, no. with that being said, wait a sec. What is Greg Hamilton doing awake so early? <laughs> we, yeah, the Holy Spirit. We, we weren't expecting you. you. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. you know that. Sheesh. Yeah, we weren't expecting oh, you for like two more hours. <laughs> He probably had two no. lattes, and, and somebody slips a, a double whammy of caffeine in there. That's why he's up. Holy Ghost caffeine. Oh, God. Oh, my. Oh, I hope that's good, Ryan, not bad, Ryan. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, God. My coffee. No, yeah, you, I guess Greg know, just woke up and wanted to work out, so let's go, brother. Uh, uh I, I, I actually made a mistake because I was, uh, uh, he said Matthew 3 and then 45 dot, dot, dot. And, and so I'm, I'm looking at, at 13, 45, and, I'm, and it says, it's real interesting. At 1337, in Mark, where I was, I wasn't in Matthew for some reason. And, uh, uh, where was that? Oh, yeah, yeah, here it is. And, and there is no 45. So I was saying, oh, what are you doing, Ryan? And it was me who made the mistake. But look what 1337 says. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Hmm. Just interesting. And then we come back and... and hmm. um, um, I, I, I guess I need to share this with you, um, and, and it fits dovetails within everything you, you guys are talking about, and it's great. I, I was enjoying listening. You, you guys don't understand. I really like it when I can just sit back and listen to the Holy Spirit do his thing among brothers who, who are tight in the Spirit. I mean, that's a blessing to me. I mean, I don't know about you, but I really enjoy it. And um, mm -hmm. anyhow, uh, what do you want me to do? This is what I heard today. What do you want me to do now, Lord? You don't hear anything? Thank you, Lord, that you've answered a prayer. And I'm just going to wash the dishes, uh, fix the faucet what wasn't working right, or whatever the story is. More people I've witnessed to uh, with just giving them money at, at
that, and it's usually to people who you think wouldn't need the money. But the principle of the thing overwhelms them. Because everybody treats them, they're treating them as God, and actually that compounds their misery. So what is the sowing of the seed? Are you there? But I know if I'm a landlord and I'm so used to people working me and doing things to do this and that, you, you know, I, I never enjoyed being a landlord ever. <laughs> Why? But, and when I found somebody who just did stuff, didn't even charge or anything else, and I know it took their time and stuff, man, what can I do for you? What can I do? What can I do for you? I'll listen to you. And, and you, the Holy Spirit was right on with you, Greg. That's exactly it. But if I'm all about me and how spiritual I am and prophesy this and do that, and blah, 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 no, no. Money's a powerful tool. Anything in the world is a powerful tool used by the Holy Spirit. Where's the fight? Your opinion. Devil loves that. Based on maybe 50 times getting beat up or whatever. And who's the beater upper most of the time? Us. Us. And why do we do it? Immaterial. Immaterial. Get past it. You'll find out. When you take the step to do it God's way, you'll figure it out. Because why? we got to keep that old flesh buried. So bring a couple of shovels with you. Uh, and I heard the love of God being demonstrated. And you're right. Sometimes people don't know. Um, it's when we get out of out of character, uh, bent out of shape, and we start getting in a way. Why? Because just the patience that God is trying to uh, have us to operate in, if we just wait on the Lord, he shall renew our strength. And that's what happened. You waited for him. Um, and your strength was renewed. Why? Because God worked everything out in your favor. Um, and your favor was the fact that Hey, I can do the work. I'm what you've been looking for. But it was God who was doing that through you. And what was it that he was doing? He was showing your characteristics. So it was like it was a beautiful situation, not just for a blessing of a job, but for the blessing to bless the Lord by his his worth. Uh, worth, W-O-R-T-H, uh, not W-O-R-K, but worth. Uh, what is his worth? His love, his patience, his kindness, long suffering, not easily to be uh, provoked. You know, those things, those are the attributes of why we not just bless the Lord, but we love him and we thank you. Why? Because he first loved us. And what was the love of God? He didn't say, look, you don't fit my criteria. Uh, you aren't doing the job right. He works with us. He's patient with us. He builds us up. OK, I see some areas we need to work on, but I'm going to still hire you. This is where you can grow. This is going to be a a, 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 a a beautiful relationship, not because you're just the man for it but because of the goodness of Christ that is in you that can be brought forth. And that's what I heard. So, can I share something with you as well, brother, as a tool to grow? Um, because sure. your story is actually, uh, it doesn't rehash, but it reminds me of God's goodness that he had to deal with me. It's kind of uh -huh. a prayer, prayer request for, you know, the, the the advancement of the housing situation here with me and my family, and that's kind of where I'm at. 
I'll pray for you, brother. I would love to pray for you. And I say why, because it's literally, uh, it's literally the same thing that God has brought me out of. Um, God is doing a work within you. He's cultivating you. This whole situation is about to cultivate you. And I get it. I fought against it so long. Why? Because there were areas in me that God wanted to die. And for the faith and trusting God to be a good God and work all things out, that everything will work out for my good. The problem was, is my definition of good wasn't God's definition of good. So I had to let go of my definition and really start understanding what God's definition is. I share this with you. I asked God for a house. I want a house. My idea of a house was a beautiful home, big, everything else. All of my kids could be in this one house. God wants to bless me with that. So during this journey, it didn't happen when I wanted it to. Uh, During this journey, it started back in 2017 of November 9th. I'm still, I'm going to say this. I'm beyond where I thought I was. There's two things to this story. Part of it is, thank you, Lord, was the biggest issue that I argue with God about. God, how is it that you're going to give me the desires of my heart when every time I keep reading your word, it changes my heart? (laughs) That's not fair. That wasn't fair. Why? Because my heart, as the word said, is desperately wicked. And even the things, the thought of thinking and the things that I want was wicked thoughts of thinking. I wouldn't say it was wicked thoughts, but what was it that made it wicked? It wasn't in accordance to what God had planned for my will. I wanted something big and extravagant. Just thinking that money was the answer. Money is not the answer. The the, the character, the responsibility, those are the answers. So as God wants to bless you and give you your kids, he will, especially if he said he will. And if he's given them to you, he are, he's not going to give you his children without a plan. Thank you, Lord. He's reminding me he gave the son of God to Mary and Joseph, and they didn't even have a place to stay. But they were OK. God knows all of our needs. The scripture says foxes have holes. Uh, birds of the air has nesting, but the, there was no place for the son of man to rest his head. So if God has provided shelter and covering for everyone else, but he came in the form of a man and his shelter and his covering. Was it, let's just say, wasn't stable, but his stability was doing the will of the father. That was his stability. He even tells us when we go into a city to, um, to stay at one place, especially if they welcome us, pray over that place. Thank you, Lord. We were just talking about that with Mr. Hamilton. Your job right right now where you're at is to bless this place. You said it's filling up. Thank God for the people who have shelter. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The problem that I had, I made it selfish. Why? Because I was thinking about me and I wasn't looking at what God was doing. I wasn't praying and God is dealing with me now. Don't just talk about a situation. And and I'm not saying you're not doing this because you asked for prayer. I'm just sharing with you the process that God has allowed me to come out of. And a lot of it was a lot of negative thinking. God tells us clearly, our ways are not his ways. So, Father God, I want to thank you for, thank you, Lord Jesus, for trusting and believing you. You tell us to be still and know that you're God. Lord, we know that you're God. Lord, but we struggle with our our concerns. 
Lord, and you say, I care for your concerns. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our care. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that it just don't fall on deaf ears. Thank you for the planning, the housing that you have, Lord Jesus. You're trying to position our brother, not just bless him with a house, but you want to bless him with the responsibility of caring for the house. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's even stated it. He needs to find that. So as you're maneuvering him, Lord Jesus, you're just asking for us to be patient, to allow you to work all things out for our good, Lord Jesus. That's like a double whammy for us to be patient. Thank you, Lord. But what you're delivering for us from, Lord Jesus, is the anxiousness. You said be anxious for nothing but in prayer and supplication, pray about everything and then give thanks. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for the prayer that went forth, for housing, for um, transportation, Lord Jesus, for clothing on the back, for food to eat, healthiness, Lord Jesus, transitioning, Lord, healing of the mind, Lord Jesus, growthing a new person in him, Lord Jesus. All old things are dead, Lord Jesus, and everything in Christ is new, Lord, and you're cultivating it, Lord. And as you're cultivating, you're also walking with him so he can learn and see how to care for what it is it is that you've given us, Lord. Why? Because you've done it before in Adam, Lord, and we gave it up, but now you're building us up, Lord, and teaching us the right way to care for it. Why? Because that's the same thing you did for Adam, Lord, and we made bad choices. So we're asking for the forgiveness, Lord, and we're asking for the strength and your power to make good choices, Lord Jesus, because you have the right order of things for his life. You have the right order for his children, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus. You, Those are your kids, saith the Lord, Lord. Lord Jesus, Lord, and we don't always accept that. We don't always want to hold on to that, Lord Jesus. So forgive us for being selfish. Those are your kids, Lord Jesus. You even, I remember a, 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 a rapper says, what would you rather have? And then, oh, yes, Lord. What would you rather have? Would you rather have your children with you, Lord Jesus, or to suffer a little bit longer? Lord Jesus, so we thank you, Lord Jesus, because, Lord... <laughs> They're not suffering, Lord, because your hand is on their life, Lord. Now, of course, yes, the suffering was we wanted to do it our way, Lord Jesus. So we're asking for forgiveness, Lord Jesus. We're asking for forgiveness and we're asking for strength, Lord Jesus. Help us to be the bride of Christ, to trust our husband. You tell, you tell the bride, Lord Jesus, to be submissive unto the husband and husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church. So this situation has just flipped, Lord. Why? Because us as men, we are the bride of Christ, Lord. So we're the submissive wife, Lord Jesus. Help us to be submissive unto you. See, the full hand of God, Lord, it works both ways. It's just not man being um, uh, 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 superior, but it's man being humble, Lord Jesus. Lord, you said even you came lower than the angels. You were God. So as you being head of the household, you humbled yourself. As us being head of the household, we need to humble ourselves, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for this, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for even the bride of Christ that, Lord, you're building within us, Lord, the brides that you have for us. Why? Because it's still she's still the bride of Christ. Lord, so we thank you for all that you're doing, Lord. We want to thank you for the healthy air, uh, uh, elements, Lord Jesus, for the children, Lord Jesus, a peaceful place, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for the turmoil, but you're working some things out of our brother, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I heard him say the same thing that I went through. I went through programs, even when it felt like it wasn't me, but it was for you, Lord. It was for you to show me what I needed to work on, Lord Jesus. Lord, and I would always say, but I didn't do anything. But you said the things that I'm working out of you did do something. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for working everything out, Lord Jesus, for our good. Lord, forgive us for the stubbornness. Forgive us for the ignorance, Lord. Forgive us for not just praising you, Lord, because you was patient and kind, Lord Jesus, in the midst of it all. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the outcome of our brother, Lord. We thank you that, Lord Jesus, that for every diamond that has to be carved out of the mountain, Lord Jesus, it has to be cleansed and then purified so it can be able to shine properly, Lord Jesus, as other people can see the value. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for, Lord, cleaning up our brother, Lord Jesus, not just chipping away from the uh, the mountain, Lord Jesus, but even the dirt that's still somewhat contached to us, Lord Jesus, but you're purifying us, Lord, and we just thank you for that. We give you the praise, glory, and honor, Lord Jesus, and that is it's done, Lord Jesus. Help us to just glorify you and thank you for the patience, Lord.
because you said love is patient. Love is kind. Lord, and that's what you continue to be to us. And you love this, Lord Jesus, this way with the same comfort. And you're teaching us to have the same comfort to one another. And we give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. 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 Um, Brother Helmston, hmm. have you ever seen a seed be planted in the ground and then watch the seed crack open and the roots start coming out to grab a hold of the rocks? But over time, yeah. Huh? Not right away, but over time, yes. Okay, so at the end of the day, I guess I'd be very direct. We can never see see through dirt. Right. But it's dead. It's dead. And the fact of the matter is, is because we can't see the see through dirt, God sees everything. He sees the brokenness that has happened. And in that brokenness, it was actually the seed being cracked open so the roots can be able to come out and grab a hold of some rocks so it can then grow strong. Thank you, Lord. He, you are growing strong in the Lord. That's what you're doing. You're growing strong in the Lord. We're looking at time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Take the watches off our wrists and hold our hands up high and give glory to God. Because he lives in eternity. so. I need to be at peace knowing that I can't just get it now. And why do you want it now? Why do you want it now? God has blessed me with so much to the fact that at the end of the day, it's not even the things that I want. God, I just need you. Thank you for where you at. Thank you. I don't have nobody else here in this place and I'm okay with that. God allowed me to be at peace in a studio. God has blessed me with it. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Brother Hamilton, you can see everything that's on this salt thing, or did you call in? Uh, I can see. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just, thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you saying Hamilton or Hampton? I'm saying it wrong, but I'm probably saying it, trying to say it right, mentally. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's Hampton. So Hamilton, Greg Hamilton was on. He did call in. And Hampton just came on, and he didn't see what you're referring to. Mr. Hampton, I apologize. Forgive me, man. Uh, I, I thank God, man, even in the stroke. Um, God showed me a detail of even a stroke. You know, sometimes when people have strokes, the, the left side is kind of limp. So when they walk, yeah. they drag it a little bit. And they're like, oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, oh, yes. Even though he's healed me. I'm still moving. Sometimes my words are dragged, you know, but my thoughts are there. So forgive me. And I only share that with you because I'm still thankful. I'm no different from no one else. But God has still blessed me to still be mobile. That's, why, that's, why, uh, that's why he sent me. He sent me to you, brother, because he knew I would be able to help you stay straight. You know, and, and I know what you're trying to say. I can I can uh, get you back. On that path, you know what I mean, bro? Yeah, sometimes you be pushing me. <laughs> I, yeah, I knew what you were trying to say. I just, I just like, want to get it clear me, in your mind. That's right. That's right. Because I love you. Because I love you. you try, Watson, you, are you trying to show us your house, brother? Yeah, yeah man. Oh, okay. That's the Mr. Hampton. Huh? Man, man. Like hey, plant, God has blessed in the me, desert, Mr. Man. Hampton. Uh, 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 when I was looking for a place, I was God has showed me I had PTSD of even the ghetto. And what does that mean? I was only used to being able to have the ghetto. So even that's what I was looking for. That's what I considered as cheap. And I was looking for that. But God wanted to bless me, you know, and, and I didn't know that God was trying to bless me. I was afraid to accept the blessing. Mm. This is so what a seed it, looks like, like when it gets Lord planted Jesus. in the desert, right? Like Greg, you, yeah. you know we prayed, Lord, this, plant this, him, this plant is the garage. him, plant him. Yep. So this is the garage. This is a rental right here. 
And God is showing me, look, get used to this. Get used to it. I believe God is going to bless me with a car. Get used to it. Amen. That's right. There, this is this is all downstairs. So I'm showing you all of this to let you know, man, I was homeless for four years. I was in programs. I was in the shelters. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I was in a place and wanted better. God allowed me to be at a place one time. A friend, my sister's boyfriend, cousin, allowed me to stay at his house in Bakersfield in a five bedroom house. That was the first time that God blessed me. What did God bless me? He allowed me to see God. Why would I need a big house when I'm in only one or two rooms? This is too much. And it's like, finally, after God blessed me with a, this is not a studio. This is bigger than a studio, but it's not enough. It, it, it's bigger than the studio. It's enough for me to grow and it's not big enough to be overwhelming. But God had to build character first. To leave Long Beach, to go to Mojave Desert for work, to show up every day. I think I've only been sent home one time and that's before because my car broke down and moving too fast. I forgot my shoes. My car broke down several times, but God had a way. He worked things out for me. God is going to work everything out. He wouldn't give you a path without his blessings. And thank you, Lord. He wouldn't give you a, 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 a path without the right things attached to that path. You just have to stay a course. Thank you, Lord. I got to show you this last little thing. I used to live in Long Beach on the front line. And when I say the front line, it was the front line of, of the streets. Ryan can testify for it. I was next to a church that was doing ministry every Saturday. The homeless sat right there on my porch in the front on the street. But then God ended up having me to, I would, I would pray for some, feed others, not because of anything else. Look at the difference now. God has a plan for you, man. He has a plan, but he wants you to be in alignment with his plan that he has for you. Do I want sometimes what I want when I want it? Yeah. That's just the ignorant part. But God is still loving and kind to be like, you know, thank you, Lord. Sometimes we can be the Shaniquas to the relationship. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You didn't have one, Brother Hampton. I had five of them. <laughs> I'm done with Shaniquas. So I better act right. I better, because sometimes I'll be acting like the Shaniqua to God. He don't mm -mm. want none of that. Mm -mm. Come on, tell him, brother uh, Brandon. Tell him. <laughs> I said enough. I just said, mm -mm. right, Somebody right. make a T-shirt. You want to take your earrings off and go outside where you want to talk crazy to me in front of everybody? Yeah, I wish you would do something to me. What? It's like, where is this coming from? Hit me. Go ahead and hit me. I'll call the police. Say, what? Mm. Where is this coming from? That's what we be acting like. We be acting like Shaniqua to God. 
And half the time, what we be thinking on our head? Why you just won't shut up and act right? God be thinking the same thing. <laughs> so that's just it, man. I want to share it with you. I like that, right? Mm -hmm. Thank glory to God. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to use that. Uh, I'm gonna, thank God allowed us to use that. We all gonna have to use that. Do you want to be the Shaniqua to God? <laughs> no, man. We're we're gonna make a T-shirt. It's gonna say, "No Mo Shaniquas." Right? Do That's you want to be the Shaniqua? And everybody know what the Shaniqua is. Dude, check this out. So you know that I knew the layout of your old place in Long Beach, right? I'm seeing a very similar layout to this place as your old place, except this one is three times as good. Like, you walk in, and to the right, there's your kitchen nook. Same place here, except this kitchen nook is much bigger. You look to the left, and there's the, the kitchen. Except this kitchen is much bigger. You walk straight through the front door in your old place, and what'd you hit? The toilet. You walk straight through this place, and what do you hit? The toilet's on the right. The garage is where the toilet used to be. And then there's a whole second story that wasn't there before with two bedrooms and whatever's upstairs, right? Like it's, it's the actuality, same layout, right? it's, but, but improved. <laughs> wow. It's actually the same detailed layout, the same exact things that you're missing. So remember that mm -hmm. closet downstairs in the first studio? There was a little right. closet there. There's a yes. little closet in the same spot. Even though that yeah. it was a full bathroom, this is a half a bathroom. Right behind us was a wall. All God did was open up the wall and gave you a garage. To the left of that was the, 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 the wall to the closet. But to the left of that is the door to the closet. Upstairs, like you said, when I walk in, I had the living room, which was actually your living areas. So all God did. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look, Brother Hampton, here's the here's the glory for glorification of God. These stairs are going up. That's where God want us to go. Brother Ryan, and this is where the Holy Spirit is using all of us as one body. He's seen it. The layout is the same thing, but we're going to just keep moving you up. That's all God is doing for our life is bringing us upwards, closer to him. Here's your second level. God, what's next? Like I said, God, I want this house to be a house of prayer. When we go into the sanctuary and we can we can sense and feel the Holy Spirit in the sanctuary. Why? Because somebody's been in there praying. The uh, worship has been going for. That's how my house needs to be. That's how my heart needs to be. My soul needs to be. That's where we're cultivating. And that's what you can be able to bring to your children. So God has to bring you first through. Christ went through everything that we went through first. He's the first seed. Brother Hampton, you're going to be the first seed in your family. All of us are being the first seeds in our family. He's getting rid of the Shaniquas and he's going to bless you with a bride of Christ. This is a beautiful story. And it's written by yours truly, Jesus. Hey, good morning and evening, afternoon to all the saints, the brothers and salt. This is Brother Lloyd. I've been listening in and uh, 
praise God for prayer. And what I was getting out of this is Greg was ministering, giving his testimony, but ministering. When my brother was talking about the children, so there's a lot of things that that I was taking from that. Um, one of which, when it comes to God's good, this is what I got. I got what my brother said. But in addition to that, I also received my own uh, take on what my brother was saying. And I know we're in agreement on this. God's good is different. So when the scriptures, it says that um, in all things, God can use it for his good for those of us who love him. So when we think about God's good, and what is his very purpose in Genesis 126 but to fashion and form us in his image and likeness? So we know that God is a righteous God. He's a holy God. It's his very divine nature. And God says he wants to fashion and form us in his nature. So there's this good that God wants to train us up in. So when the scripture says train up a child in the way that they should go, my brother said we got to love God first. We got to put God first. So everything that we train our children in, Shouldn't that be because we are subjected and we submit to God's training of us? He's our heavenly father and we're his children. And his good is what he wants to train us up in. So therefore, um, when we think about the scriptures, that training for the children, I know if it's Hebrew or Greek, but I know that train in that context would mean to fence in, to wall in. So what is it that we want to put a hedge of protection or we want to put boundaries on our children when we're training them up. We want to make sure their environment is wholesome, effective, um, 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 educational, but we protect the children. So there's things that we want to keep our children away from, separate our children away from. There's things we want to subject our children to in order that they're being built up and trained up. And everything that we're doing Praise God that we're girded up. Praise God that we're receiving his training. Because this will be a generational blessing if we're receiving from my heavenly father how to be trained and reared up, how to be separated unto him, fenced in and walled in in his righteousness. And so therefore the generational blessing is that we pass that on to our children. Because it's the way we've been trained up. It's the way the Lord has groomed us in his good. So when we think about the scripture, um, as we're being fashioned and formed in God's image and likeness, Genesis 1, 26, what is it that happened to us during the fall of Adam? Because when we, when Adam transgressed, now we're, we're, we're in Satan's camp, shaped in sin and born in iniquity. I'm not talking about today, and I'm talking about us as, as believers. I'm talking about when we were children of Adam. So we were under the father Satan, and we were trained and groomed and surrounded and, and set up uh, in, in unrighteousness. It's called sin. So when I was thinking about that, I could take that right back to Romans chapter five and the distinction between children of Adam versus children of the last Adam, children of God, Christ. It says through the one man, for the one offense, death reigned through the one. I'm reading Romans chapter five and 17. More those who receive the abundance of grace. So there's one thing when it came through Adam, shaped in sin and iniquity and, and, under, and, and caught up in the sin nature, right? The disobedience, the children of disobedience versus being raised up in Christ. The good that God wants us to have, the, 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 the fencing in and separating us in his righteousness that we are God's children that he's training us up in. Because God is training us up in righteousness. Amen. So um, when we the eternal life of God is is an element of his grace and he's given it to us in this eternal life that he's purposed for us to have his life training us up in fashion and forming us in his life in his eternal life. And we are now groomed in his righteousness. That's what that's the benefits that we gain being trained up in the way that children go because now we're, the scripture says we're even slaves to his righteousness because we belong, he's our master. We belong to him and every work that we do 
should be under his guidance, under his instruction, unto righteousness. So because we're slaves, it's not a bad thing. It's just that we're dedicated. We belong to the master. We belong to God. And we're his children. So he's training us up in, in becoming sons. From children, developmentally, fashioned and formed in his image and likeness to become sons so that we can get the fullness of his blessings for the, the, for the kingdom, for the citizenship in heaven, for the household of God, for the, all those things that God is purposing for us to have um, under his government, under his rulership. All those things that God died for on the cross to honor the will of God that with that very plan and purpose that was founded from the predestined, you know, before the foundation of the world. All of this that my brother's testimony was speaking from when he's learned about his children, the Lord is teaching him to be quiet and teaching him to be obedient, standing with him, being patient as the Lord is going to gift him with the Lord is preparing him to receive. All of that homelessness, all of that God could use for his good. Amen. I had issues with abandonment and rejection. Hmm. Amen. And I, then I learned later on that those are those are those are or 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 abandonment and rejection. Those main two things deal with some type of curse. It could be a Jezebel spirit. It could be a perversion. It could be control. A lot of different things that are not towards God's character. The world, the enemy, they do perversion. God does love. The world, the enemy, they do selfishness. God do selflessness. The world do unrighteousness. God do righteousness. And I would think everything was already with the way God wanted it. It's just the absence of righteousness would leave you what? The absence of selflessness would leave you what? The absence of purity and peace would leave you what? In chaos and void. That's why when my brother was talking about the, the choice Adam and Eve chose good and evil, we were never created to be experienced or exposed to good and evil. But now that we have the tree of that knowledge, the scripture says you could be just as God who can be exposed to that. But only God is able to sustain through the good and evil to continue to be all good. We weren't don't have the capacity to, to do that without God's guidance, without God's instruction. We don't have the capacity to deal with lust and desires and impulses and, 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 and all of these things without God. So that's why I was looking for that scripture. I think it's second, you see the Thessalonians. But anyway, it says through these tribulations, this is the good of God. Through tribulations, God is with us, co-laboring with us, that we endure through obstacles. We endure. This is the training. This is the training up the child in the way it should go. He's training us up to endure through tribulation because that's an evidence that God's strength is there through our weaknesses. And he's going to build us up in endurance because that builds character. And as you build up endurance, and these are steps my brother was talking about. The steps, I don't know if he said it was his vision, his dream, that the Lord is taking us through these steps of development. And his faith, our faith in him, and the end we're, we're stepping toward is God's love. The fullness of, not that we don't have it now, but the fullness, the completeness of it. So we need to go endure these tribulations. Take another step that you endure. It. Take another step that you overcome to build character. Take another step to now be, uh, 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 let your faith be supplemented with the attributes of God. My brother was talking about them attributes. All the fruit of the spirit are the essence and attributes of God for our training. And if we partake of all the things that God has purposed for us to have as a heavenly father and provider, and we're his children that's being trained up, we continue to partake and abide and be led in God's instruction and training. He's building us up, up them steps from one step. Endure it, build character, then virtue, then hope, all the way up to brotherly love. And then that final step, we meet, we, we, we get to the goal and we get the complete and fullness of his love and everything in between is the journey everything in between faith and love is our training because if we was already i mean by faith we have it but if we was already complete why isn't god leaving us still here we should already be up there we already complete we good 
But we're here for the training. We're here as we're being built up to be what? A generational blessing to those that are in our atmosphere, in our area of influence. As we build, as this church are being purpose to build one another up in God's love. This is the building. All of it is being built up in his love. All of those fruits of the spirit, those virtues, those attributes, building, building up, training us up in his love. And as we gain it, as we embrace it, as we continue to embrace it, now we get to express it. And when we express it, that's the image and likeness of God that we're expressing through this training. So that we can be a blessing to others, not a curse. We got to be a blessing to ourselves, thank you, God, so we can be a blessing to others. We got to be trained up in God first so we can train up the children in a way they should go. That's a generational blessing. And that's God's purpose that he predestined for us to have. That's where we're at right now, salt men, when we come together to be a corporate expression of God that we what? Bless others that come in our atmosphere because we have that power of love that God has implanted and dispensed in us to now be an extension of his love. To now be what? Light bears. To what? Express. Shine that light. When we go out and evangelize, shine that light when we rear and nurture our children. Shine that light when we love and embrace our brothers. Anything outside of that is a breach. Anything outside of what God's plan and purpose for us is a rest of development. And until we continue to be blessed with God's blessings, we can't benefit ourselves to be a benefit to others. And that's where we're at, brothers. I hope I'm saying this on a positive tip, but this is the this is what I be getting when I'm hearing my brother speak. This is what I get when I be quiet. So I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for this awesome day, an opportunity to be a blessing for others. Thank you, Father God, who already blessed me as a, ch as a child of God, of his righteousness, training me up in the way that I should go, because he is the leader by example. He did it himself. Train me up in obedience, Lord, like you had to suffer to learn it for humanity's sake. You're already God. You already got. You already operate in the highest standards. Yes, sir. Exactly. That's right. And I'm the training dog up too. He getting his training. I got him fenced in so he can only poop over here on the side because I'm my grandson's gonna start playing in the grass, but I can't have no poop out there. But anyway, thank you, Lord, for the children. Thank you for the God that they are your children on assignment. The children of ours on assignment, like my brother said, but they're God's children. He's a source of it. We're your children, God. Certainly our offsprings are yours as well. So I just thank you for the God for being your originator and the source of love. I thank you for the God in that power and source of love. We receive salvation. Such a selfish act, such a, a suffering that you had to go through when you got on that cross by obedience to follow the will of God, to be a blessing for the generations of people, to be a blessing for your creation. That's your purpose and plan for us, Father God, that we will be one spirit, one kingdom under one ruler and one God in harmony and peace and in love forever, ever and ever and ever. So, Lord, we honor your plan and everything that we do. Let it continue to be an evidence of that honor. Everything we do and say, let it be an evidence of the God that lives in us, the righteousness that already lives in us. Father God, help us to take that inwardly and express it outwardly. Help us, Father God, to add the works to that faith. That if we believe, then there should be some fruit of our belief emanating, being expressed through us when we go out in the highways and the byways, when we go out and be around our children, we go out and embrace our brothers and sisters. Let that plan continue to go forward. Your image, Lord God, your righteousness, your holiness, your character, your attributes, your virtues. Thank you, Father God, that we can supplement our faith with all of these spiritual vitamins that you've blessed us to have. Your provisions. It's the economy. God's economy is all of God's resources, all of God's blessings available to us. And we need to partake of it or else we, we cheat ourselves. we got all these resources available within reach. Let us take heed. Let us take hold and let us fully receive it so that we can be a blessing to give it back out in Jesus name. Thank <laughs> you.
You guys, I'm getting ready to go. I got